7.45 a.m., rush hour, central Tokyo. Five men board five separate subway trains. At 8 a.m., each man pierces plastic bags, releasing sarin, one of the most lethal poison gases known to man. 13 people die a horrible, choking death. Hundreds are injured. There's a nerve gas attack on the nerve center of Japan. The mastermind behind this assault was a religious guru who said that the world and everyone in it could only be saved if they were first destroyed. But why did this happen? And why in Japan? And could it happen again? March 20th, 1995, was a day that terrified a nation and shocked the wider world. The Tokyo subway sarin gas attack may be 25 years old, but for some, it's far from a distant memory. Shizue Takahashi was at work when she heard that there'd been an incident on the subway where her husband, Kazumasa, was a senior member of staff. で、え、反対側の方の反対側にあるゴミ箱から新聞紙を取り出して、多分その日はみんなそれがサリンだっていうことは知らなかったと思います。Sake Ito was traveling on the subway when he began to notice something was badly wrong. 途中からなんか様子がおかしくて皆さんこう咳込んだり、いろんなうつみたいなんかしてしたので、なんか様子がおかしいというので で、中の様子を見たらもうほとんど何が何だかわかんないぐらいの状態でなんだろうこれっていうすごい初めての体験でそんなの見たことがない。Ito managed to get off the train and out of the station. タクシーの中でなんか息苦しくなったり。3秒目にいたら今の私がここにいないのかもしれないんですけど、すごい Shizue Takahashi rushed to the hospital to find out what had happened to her husband. で、事件が起きたのは8時前後というふうに言われてますけど、私が到着したのが病院に到着したのが11時半頃で、すでに主人はもう冷たくなっていました。Japan, long considered one of the world's safest societies, was thrown into a state of shock. That shock was intensified when it was established that the attack was carried out not by hardened terrorists, but by a religious group called Om Shinrikyo, or Supreme Truth. Om's leader was a nearly blind 40-year-old yoga teacher who called himself Shoko Asahara. The first thing to say is it's very, very difficult to have a really balanced portrait of this guy. He was certainly ambitious, obviously, because he believed he had a way of telling the truth to society. He was manipulative to the extent that he had a charismatic power which persuaded people to do things. Opinion about Om Shinrikyo's self-proclaimed messiah has been sharply divided ever since. <laughs> Ma 
Asahara's critics dismiss him as a devious fraud. Religious scholars argue that Asahara may have been both a con man and at the same time part of a long tradition of inspirational spiritual leaders. The people I talked to who were members of Ulm invariably said he was, you know, they, they felt a real charismatic power and they all said he could be soft, warm and compassionate. しし Asahara had convinced the men responsible for the gas attack on the subway that the only way to save the rest of the world from falling into hell was for all non-believers to die so that they could then be reborn. In the beginning, it was all very different. Om used their own animation to present a public image that was innocent, perhaps a little childish, but essentially harmless. Asahara offered his followers a ragbag of ideas, drawn from Buddhism, Hinduism and even Christianity, all coloured by his love of science fiction and comic books. At first, the wider public regarded Asahara as an intriguing new religious figure. Akitoshi Hirosu joined Om when he was just 20. He was never involved in any of their violence, which he now condemns. So, the most important thing is that the Asahara's initial appeal lay in his ready answers to some of life's eternal questions. In the 1990s, Japan's bubble economy had made it the envy of the rest of the world. It also produced a new generation, questioning the emphasis on material riches rather than spiritual growth. It was basically like so many religions, it's saying that the real meaning isn't in the material but in the spiritual. Uh, and that is the goal, is to try and escape from the confines of material society. Asahara taught that living in the material world risked being contaminated with bad karma. The more bad karma you had, the worse your rebirth would be and the longer you could spend in hell. <laughs> Asahara first leapt into the public consciousness with this photograph, suggesting that the yoga master could float in the air. あの、Takimoto decided to ridicule Asahara by creating his own fake image, suggesting he too could fly. 不要ちゃんとできると。そんな写真あるとなれば、Asahara自体に疑念を持つ。To his young followers, there was no room for doubt. 
下脱不悟りという究極的なその精神的な境地に到達することが人の生きる目的なのだ。For a time, Asahara became something of a media darling, even having his picture taken with international religious figures like the Dalai Lama. But behind the cuddly public image, at Om's core, lay an uncompromising creed. Now, because Om saw the material world, this world we live in, as intrinsically malign, as intrinsically dark and, and overly materialistic, just by living in this world, we're accruing bad karma. Unless you do spiritual practices, you're going to go to the hells at death. To avoid going to hell and to rid themselves of bad karma, Devotees were expected to cut off all links with the outside world. Asahara also exploited an explosion of interest among young Japanese in Nostradamus. The French astrologer, who centuries earlier had predicted the exact year the world would end. ひょっとしたらノストラダムスが言っていたのは1999年滅亡ってあり得るんじゃないかということはっていうなそういったの恐れもあって、でまあそれを解決するのはオウムなんだという打ち出しをしていたっていうのもあまあ自分にとって魅力的だ。Now of course, if you reinforce a message of The end of the world may be coming, or the final conflict may be coming at the end of the 20th century, good old 1999. And you then say a savior might come from the east. It's an open invitation to all the saviors of the east to stick their hands up and say, That's me. Devotees were expected to push their bodies and minds to the limit. だからまあ一般的に見ればすごく大変なことだったんだけどまあみんなはそれによって修行が済むんだとみんな言い聞かせてましたから精神的にはまあ充実してたしてるというふうに当時は感じてましたね。In one particularly demanding ritual, devotees would allow themselves to be locked in a small box, which was then buried underground with just enough oxygen to keep them alive. で真っ暗な中に。入れ,入れて漆黒の闇の中に7分でもいたらましてや1日いたら人間おかしくなります変性意識状態になって。And there was much worse to come. In September 1988, one young Om disciple was tightly bound and hung upside down by his legs. The idea was inspired by a centuries old traditional yoga practice, normally only performed by experts. Usually, it's very gradual, so it will take years for a practitioner to then do something like this. While in, in Om, the process was very quick, so in the matter of a few months,、uh, they and then can result, of course, in a in,、uh, in, in dang very dangerous situation. He starts getting disoriented.、Um, So they say, what should we do? And、uh, Asahara says, get, make him do more, you know, to get through them. And somewhere in the middle of it, he loses control and then dies suddenly. This first death happened just as Om was trying to secure charitable status as a new religion from the Tokyo Metropolitan Government. They don't want to say to the public, oh, by the way, we've just killed one of our followers in our practices, because that isn't going to. Make the movement popular and it's going to cause all sorts of problems. Asahara has to come up with an explanation for the death to fit in with his teachings. The only way he can attain enlightenment is to shed his body under the guidance of the Guru of Masahara and then maybe he can be reborn somewhere and then do it again. As far as we know from later testimonies, they dispensed with the body, they got rid of it, they burnt it. When another disciple threatens to blow the whistle, the cover up degenerates further into cold blooded murder. And then what happens is one of the people involved in this has a kind of qualm of conscience, and he eventually says, I've lost my faith, 
I'm going to go to the police. Om's leader and his closest disciples have crossed over to the dark side. He was strangled uh, and his body cremated and the ashes fl flushed away. Before the gas attack on the Tokyo subway, most Japanese considered Om Shinrikyo as just another minor new religion, led by an eccentric but seemingly harmless guru, offering his followers an alternative way of living. They didn't fit in in the Japanese society. They didn't really fit in in this kind of super consumerist type of society. They wanted something that was quite clear and, and, and what they define is that uh, they were attracted by Azahara being a very good, they, they saw him as a very good teacher. Om asked new devotees to prove their commitment by renouncing everything they had once held dear. So they just gave up everything, uh, their family, their belonging, their current employment and leave in commune with the organization. To many Japanese, this breaking of family bonds was deeply disturbing. Some parents feared what was happening to their children behind Om's closed doors. あるいはま、特殊な大物にとってすごいいい情報ばかりにしていた。で、そして知り合える Parents were disturbed to learn that Om devotees were encouraged to wear the perfect salvation initiation unit, a head cap linked to electrical cables, which Asahara claimed would allow his brain waves to enter their brains. Om disciples were also encouraged to experiment with illegal mind-altering drugs to help them reach a higher state of consciousness. One group of anxious parents hired lawyers to investigate Asahara and Om. あの、最初は得意なというか、あ、変わった説法をする教祖の信仰宗教団体というぐらいの認識で危険なっていう意識はあんまりなかったと思います。Kojima was persuaded to take a closer look at Om by his fellow lawyer Sakamoto who wanted to challenge Asahara's claims of supernatural powers. ま、例えば、オウム真理教が京都大学で調べたら、教祖の now, Asahara was at risk of public ridicule. But while attempts were made to raise the alarm about what was really going on inside OM, the police, scarred by Japan's post-war history, were reluctant to intervene. 1945, when Japan surrenders, it comes under occupation government, a new constitution is developed, which has got embedded in it the concept of freedom of religious belief and the principle that the state cannot interfere in the, you know, the religious world. 
This police fear of being seen to harass new religions left OMS critics like Sakamoto exposed to danger. November 4th, 1989. Asahara sends a four-man team of his closest disciples to deal with Sakamoto. The OM hit squad break into his apartment in the middle of the night and seize Sakamoto, along with his wife and 14-month-old son. When Sakamoto fails to turn up for work, his friends grow anxious. So, それで部屋の様子を見たんですが、例えば1歳の赤ちゃんの辰彦君の部位紐がそのままになってたり、食事の後の食器が流しにまだつけたままになってたり、もう普通に暮らしてポッといなくなっている感じだったんですよ。Sakamoto and his wife were abducted, poisoned, and then strangled by the OM killers. Their baby son was suffocated. The bodies were then mutilated to make identification more difficult. The bodies were buried separately in remote rural locations. They were not found for another six years, until after the subway attack. Even though they knew that Sakamoto had been threatened by OM in the past, the police failed to connect Asahara and his disciples with the abduction. Despite the disappearance of the Sakamoto family and the growing rumors of other sinister activities, Om still wanted to present an innocent image to the outside world. In 1990, Asahara decided to raise Om's profile by entering Japanese politics. They didn't have a political manifesto. Um, they talked about the end of the world coming and the need to do meditation and stuff like that. Um, and that Shoko, Asahara Shoko, the guru, had the message of truth. And if everybody joined Om, then everybody would be saved. And they went around chanting songs of praise to Asahara. Asahara told his followers they were sure to be victorious. The voters were not convinced. And of course, nobody was saying they were going to vote for them and they were just laughing at them. Um, and then and then is how it was portrayed also in the media. It was it, it was an object of ridicule. Nobody took it really seriously, and the failure was massive. But if the outside world was laughing at him, Asahara was now deadly serious. They saw from late 1990 onwards the world had rejected the truth. So they rejected the truth, they must be punished. So that's when they start thinking that the only way to purify the world is to get rid of most of the population. It's the salvation of the worthy few. If the outside world would not embrace Om, Asahara told his followers he had reached a stark conclusion. In order to save mankind, all non-believers would first have to die. At the start of the 1990s, Om Shinrikyo seems to turn its back on the outside world and begins buying land to build what its guru says would be a heaven on earth. 
but Asahara also tells his elite followers to begin secretly preparing for the end of the world. They become more paranoid, they become more defensive, and they become more convinced that the Armageddon that they, that they prophesied is going to happen and they're going to ha it's not just a spiritual conflict, but it's going to be a real conflict. Asahara and his closest acolytes begin to covertly assemble an arsenal of chemical and biological weapons for the coming apocalypse. When a legal dispute over one attempt to buy land seems destined to go against them, Asahara takes this as a personal affront and orders lethal retaliation against the judges in the case. They go up to the place where the judges are staying and they spray sarin, and it kills seven people, and it creates mayhem. The attack injured three of the judges, but the seven who died were innocent people living in neighboring homes, killed when the wind changed. In less than 10 years, Om has mutated from an apparently harmless new religion into an apocalyptic cult. They also target Shoko Igawa, a journalist threatening to expose Om. She was woken by a strong chemical smell. Phosgene, a highly toxic gas, has been sprayed through her letterbox. <laughs> その箱の中をですね、ポケットの中をまあその綿棒かなんかでこうあのをやって微物を採取してですね、どういう薬物だったのかっていうことがまあ検証できればまあ立件できるだろうということであのそれを頼んだんですけれども、やらないと。Igawa only survived because Om's elite group were struggling to produce the devastating weapons of their leader's dreams. They tried to deliver the biological weapons they gave up on because they failed to uh, deliver, d do them properly. Um, on more than one occasion, they poisoned senior members. When Om's scientists accidentally poisoned fellow members, Asahara told his disciples that they were under attack from the outside world. They start to believe that there's conspiracy against the truth because, you know, like a lot of groups, when they believe they've got the ultimate truth, how can no, anybody not believe them? In the years following the disappearance of the lawyer Sakamoto and his family, the police repeatedly failed to investigate Om's involvement in other acts of violence. By the beginning of January 1995, uh, rumours are starting to spread and be mentioned in the press, hinting at Olm's involvement in the Sarin attack. And this kind of builds up until there are many people in Japan who think Olm is doing all sorts of bad things. When Asahara and his zealots get a tip-off that the police are finally about to raid their headquarters, they decide to strike first. It seems like at that point, Asahara and his close disciples say, what are we going to do about this? Let's use Sarin to try and cause confusion in Tokyo to ward off the police. March 20th, 1995, rush hour, central Tokyo. Five OM members carrying small plastic bags wrapped in newspaper get on five different subway trains. They each carry an umbrella with a specially sharpened tip. At 8 a.m., each man pierces the plastic bags with the umbrella tip, releasing a colorless liquid. When the liquid comes into contact with air, it turns into sarin gas, a deadly poison. Oh, 
室がバタバタ倒れるで駅員もその異常さに気が付いてで緊急避難という形で、えー、皆さんも外に、えー、おのおの改札から外に出るっていうことで13 died that day more than 6,000 were injured some were blinded やっぱり毒物だっていうことは分かってあのそ,その主人だけじゃなくてそこの駅にいた人たちはみんなその包みを片付けたわけですけど皆さん具合が悪くなったのでこれは何かおかしい。シズウェイ・タカハシー had been warned that her husband Kazumasa had collapsed while trying to clean up the spilled poison and was now in hospital。そこにあの息子がもうあのえー、と主人と同じ地下鉄に勤務していて、まあ、違う駅だったんですけどそこからすぐ駆けつけてきてその主人が寝かされている部屋にあの長男はいましたその後、まあ長女も職場から駆けつけてきてみんな泣いていましたね。That the death toll was not far higher was not due to any reluctance to kill on the part of Asahara and his weapons scientists. Five guys get on five trains and they take bags with liquid sarin in. It's not pure because Ong wasn't that good at making weapons. There was a lot of media talk about them being hiring great chemists and being supremely conscious. That's a load of rubbish. If Om's weapons designers had managed to make a pure batch of sarin, they might have killed thousands. They didn't think in those terms of we're prepared to kill as many people. They were actually talking about it as saving people at the same time. In other words, if we're killing you, we're actually saving you. Within days of Om's lethal March 1995 attack on the Tokyo subway, the Japanese state finally struck back. I heard that it was a very bad thing. I thought 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 it was a very bad thing. Ordinary members of OM were stunned by reports that their supreme master had ordered a mass killing. ですからその殺すことによってその救済するんだというまあいわゆるポアっていうふうによくねあのまあ結構世間に知られる用語になりましたけどそういう考え方自体が一般の信者あの事件が起きるまであるいはまあ事件が起きて以降も団体の協議としては認識してませんでしたので。Hundreds of OM members, innocent as well as guilty, were arrested within days of the subway attack. The whole country then held its breath for another two months until the police finally hunted down OM's leader, Shoko Asahara. The Supreme Master was found hiding in a concealed room at OM headquarters. お菓子スナック菓子と思ってペットボトルお茶を持ってましたのでしばらく隠れ,た隠れようとしたんだと思うんですけどね。Once in custody, Asahara at first tried to insist that as a blind man he could not be blamed for the subway attack. 通常ですとあの自分を支えてくれた信者がたくさんも逮捕されてっていますので責任者としてもう責任を取るということで。もう威厳を持ってですね、逮捕を待ち構えていると思っていたんですけども、全くの雲隠れ状態で、本当に逃げる気でいたって感じが受けました。アサハラ couldn't have physically carried out the attacks himself, so why were some of his followers willing to carry out his murderous orders? やった被告人たちはみんなそこは強く念じて。正しいことだと信じて行動していましたね。そのまあ猛獣というか信者たちの自分のいのまあそういうその自由に物事を考えて、えー、クリエイティブに行動するということは
邪悪なるもので従いなさいという絶対服従を敷いたし。Academics who have interviewed former members of OM say it's not correct to dismiss them as unwitting disciples manipulated by an evil criminal mastermind. Most of the people I interview reject this idea of brainwashing or mind control, that they say they, at the end was their decision to do what they did or to stay in the organization. It's also true that the people they were ordered to do the killing were a very minor. Minority in, inside OM, and most of the other members were not never asked to do that. In fact, the zealots surrounding Asahara at the top of OM bought into his twisted theology. They agreed that animals and insects should be protected, but killing human beings could be an act of salvation. It's a kind of interesting, bizarre conflict of things. We don't want to kill poor little insects. But we're prepared to kill the human race in order to save it. Asahara and other senior members of OM were charged with murder. During the trial and in the years that followed, the supreme leader's sanity became the subject of intense debate. He looks like he goes, undergoes mental collapse, and I don't think that's surprising in that this is a guy who has been the supreme guru. He has the message of truth for the world, and he suddenly is imprisoned and he's failed. Everything has gone wrong. He's gone down this terrible path. The court ultimately concluded that Asahara was faking his mental illness to try to escape the death penalty. But OM's leader was never given a full psychiatric assessment. Tada, mochiron, nan so de seishin kante shinai ka, mochi seishin kante o yatte, kore wa ima sosio o keizok deki nai te koto de saiban chushin natta ra, mo nihon ju ikari kuru imasu yo ne. Saiban kan, honto ni mo mi no kiken o kanjiru ka mo shire nai shi. Tada, dare mo iidasu nai. De media mo kore o iie nai. Because if they had done, they would have found he was probably, as we say in Britain, not fit to plead, and therefore they couldn't have sentenced him to death. And the popular rhetoric in Japan was this guy deserves it to be executed. As the OM trial dragged on for years, Asahara's behavior became increasingly bizarre. <laughs> In his last years in prison, Asahara stopped speaking altogether and refused all visits from his family. For members of OM who had not been involved in any violence, the idea that their beloved supreme leader had sanctioned mass murder was at first impossible to accept. I was able to get a lot of people who were able to get a lot まあ私に限らずまあみんな受けられない状況になっていったわけですけど。それからは日本での記憶を皆さんの死を僕たちに伝えました。On July 6th, 2018, more than 23 years after the sarin attack on the Tokyo subway, Asahara was finally hanged, along with six of his closest disciples. In all, 13 of the OM elite were executed. So, this is the case of Asahara. I was in 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 the case of Asahara. If we could have taught more to these people, it would have helped a lot. I think we could have learned a lot more than 
just by incarcerating and executing. But again, that's a missed opportunity. あの、やっぱりその被害者の中にはあの、そういう事故犯の死刑執行を強く求めてる人もいましたのでね。非常に難しいとこだと思いますけれども。でも、競争と一緒はないだろうっていう感じはしましたね。Japan today is one of the most peaceful and law-abiding societies in Asia. But the Sarin Tokyo subway attack and the OM phenomenon still cast a long shadow. Hirasu is now a member of Hikari no Wa, an organization of former OM members. Today, any group formerly associated with OM is kept under close scrutiny by the Japanese authorities. Uh, so every three months they have to submit all their belonging and they are frequently searches. And uh, this law is renewed every three years. And for the moment they are still subject to it. So they are still considered a potential danger. Hirasu's new group have condemned Asahara for the sarin attack and paid some compensation to OM's victims. <laughs> 低いレベルの弟子にはわからない、より高い次元の深遠な考えがあって起こしたことじゃないかということでなんとかこう自分を納得させる思い込ませるという。The reasons why some people decide to withdraw from society and devote themselves to life inside what many of us would consider a cult have not disappeared. 自由な社会で。その自己決定の責任の重さみたいなのに生きづらさを感じた人たちはそういう大物のような全体主義的な集団つまりカルト集団にやっぱり憧れたり魅力を感じるっていうのはもうこれは人間としての根源的な問題ではないかと思うんです
Shizue Takahashi's husband, Kazumasa, died trying to clean up the spilled poison on the subway. Since then, she's devoted her life to preserving the memory of those who died and to fighting for justice for the sarin victims. その時点でなんかほっとして、もう主人に報告した途端にこう涙が出てきたっていうような、そういう状況だったので、あのやっぱり10年以上その主人の死と向き合うっていうことはできなかった。